Hello students, this is about body fluids and circulation, class 11th NCRT. Today we are talking about body fluids and circulation. So let's start our lesson. So blood, blood is a special connective tissue. So blood is with two components that is matrix of the blood as well as the cells present in the blood. Matrix of the blood is called plasma. So in the blood, the amount of plasma is around 55% and remaining 45% of the blood is with cells called formed elements. So plasma makes the matrix part of the blood. So we call the ground substance of the blood is plasma. So what exactly plasma is composed of? Plasma has almost 92% of water is present in the plasma. And most of the plasma remaining 80%, remaining 8% of the plasma is composed of all important proteins are present in the plasma. So among the proteins, the proteins that are uh, most important are albumins. Albumins are responsible for maintaining osmotic balance in the body fluids, in the blood. Next, there are globulins. Globulins, we have alpha, beta and gamma globulins, they are antibodies. Next, also there is fibrinogen is present, which is a clotting protein. So these are the main proteins that are present in the plasma of the blood. Next, also plasma consisting of some minerals, which includes sodium, calcium, magnesium, chloride and bicarbonate. These minerals are also present in the plasma. So plasma mainly has clotting proteins like fibrinogen that is what we are talking about. So plasma minus fibrinogen is called as serum. Plasma minus fibrinogen is called serum, right? So this is about plasma. So mostly plasma consisting of plasma proteins which perform all these different functions. Next, formed elements are 45%. These formed elements are of three types like erythrocytes, we call them as RBC which are the most numerous cells. Second, leukocytes, which are called white blood cells or WBC and platelets. So these are the three different type of cells present in the plasma. So first we talk about RBC erythrocytes. RBC or erythrocytes, these are the most numerous cells of the blood. The most numerous cells of the blood are RBC. Here you can see the diagram of RBC. So RBC are biconcave and are disc shaped, which are enucleated cells. RBC do not have nucleus. So these RBC erythrocytes are most numerous as I said. Their amount of RBC are almost 5 million to 5.5 million RBC are present in cubic millimeter of blood so because they are the most numerous cells next rbc as i said they are enucleated cells they are biconcave cells and this rbc contains a conjugated protein which is called as hemoglobin in a normal healthy individual the amount of hemoglobin is around 12 to 15 grams per 100 ml of blood so because of presence of this hemoglobin RBC gets the shape, get the color red. And what is the main role of this conjugated protein hemoglobin? Conjugated protein called hemoglobin helps in transport of respiratory gases. The transport. So transport of respiratory gases is the main function of this hemoglobin. Next, RBC are formed in the embryonic stages and from the bone marrow so they are formed. So the, the process of formation of RBC is called as erythropoiesis. This is called erythropoiesis is the process of formation of RBC. RBC in the embryonic stages, earlier stages of development, they are formed in the liver and later on they are formed in the bone marrow. So RBC leave for 120 days. 
after that the rbc are destroyed in the spleen so we can say that spleen is the graveyard of rbc fine next um, rbc are responsible for transport of gases like oxygen and transport uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide transport is done by this rbc right so if there is a decrease in the number of rbc it may leads to condition which is known as anemia right so these are the most numerous cells of the blood look at into this beautiful animation of rbc so these are rbc so which are disc shaped and which are moving in the blood vessels you can see this beautiful animation of rbc next we have wbc which are called as leukocytes and the process of formation of blood cells that is leukocytes is called as leukopoiesis fine these white blood cells they show a special character these are less numerous compared to rbc these are less in number so when you talk about their number so the number of this rbc wbc are 6000 to 8000 cells in cubic millimeter of blood fine wbc will have a specific character the character is that so these are the capillaries so these are the capillaries and this is a tissue wbc's show a special property where they can move out from capillaries and enter into tissues this is called diapedesis this is called diapedesis where the movement of wbc from the capillary walls capillaries into the tissues next i said wbc are less in number and these are nucleated cells they are nucleated cells whereas your rbc do not have nucleus wbc will have a nucleus these are nucleated cells of the blood the only nucleated cells of the blood are wbc fine next leukocytes or wbc are classified into two they are called granulocytes and agranulocytes so let us see what is the main difference of this granulocytes are those wbc where their cytoplasm is with protein granules cytoplasm has protein granules so for that reason these are called granulocytes and one more special character is nucleus of granulocytes nucleus of granulocytes is multi-lobed so it is a lobed nucleus can be seen in granulocytes whereas a granulocytes a granulocytes cytoplasm has no protein granules cytoplasm has no granules there are no protein granules in the cytoplasm whereas if you see the nucleus nucleus of a granulocytes is single nucleus which is a large nucleus single and large nucleus so this is the main difference between granulocytes and granulocytes so granulocytes name itself indicates that those are this white blood cells with protein granules in their cytoplasm and whereas the another interesting character is nucleus is multi-lobed whereas in granulocytes cytoplasm has no granules and nucleus is single and large nucleus now granulocytes are further divided into three types they are called eosinophils basophils and neutrophils eosinophils are just two to three percent in the total granulocytes whereas basophils are 0.5 to 1 percent of the total granulocytes and neutrophils are 60 to 65 percent most numerous cells numerous white blood cells are neutrophils whereas your monocytes account for just six to eight percent in the total blood count whereas your lymphocytes accounts for 20 to 25 percent please remember this the abundance of these uh, leukocytes in the blood like the most i mean uh, 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 less number of cells in the of wbc are your first basophils basophils are less in number then comes your eosinophils or eosinophils which are 2 to 3 percent then comes your monocytes which are 6 to 8 percent and whereas your lymphocytes are 
20 to 30 20 to 25 percent and then your neutrophils are most numerous you remember this order this is an increasing order of white blood cells so let us find out in detail the cells and their function look at into these beautiful pictures of leukocytes so first eosinophils as i said eosinophils are just two to three percent and this is a nucleus you can observe the nucleus of eosinophils which is bilobed nucleus fine eosinophils are are responsible for uh, producing or they resist infections these are for resisting the infections so these are principally associated with allergic reactions or during allergies eosinophils are produced their number increases you might have heard that there is a condition called as eosinophilia where the number of eos eosinophils will increase whereas basophils basophils observe the nucleus of this this is irregularly lobed nucleus for basophils and these basophils so they are involved in secreting histamine this is histamine and they produce serotonins and heparin so these are produced by basophils histamine and serotonin they act as or they are produced during vasodilation and vasoconstriction whereas heparin acts as anticoagulant so these basophils they are specially involved in inflammatory responses or inflammatory reactions so these are associated with inflammatory responses the basophils next i said neutrophils are most abundant cells abundant wbc present in the blood so the nucleus of neutrophils is 3 to 5 lobed nucleus whereas neutrophils are the phagocytic cells so what does it mean so any foreign microorganism that is entering into our body these microorganisms are destroyed by neutrophils next monocytes this is a nucleus of monocyte nucleus is single large nucleus and the nucleus is kidney shaped nucleus so look at into this special character of this kidney shaped nucleus now monocytes are also phagocytic cells like neutrophils next lymphocytes nucleus is large nucleus which completely occupy the cells and lymphocytes are responsible for immune responses immune response is a function and lymphocytes are of two types they are called b lymphocytes which produce antibodies and t lymphocytes which help in production of antibodies so these are white blood cells and your eosinophils basophils neutrophils all these three are granulocytes cytoplasm contain granules you can visualize those granules in the diagram and the nucleus is multi-lobed you can see the pictures then monocytes and lymphocytes cytoplasm do not have any protein granules and nucleus is single and large nucleus now third type of cells are blood platelets which are also known as thrombocytes listen there is some special character for these how do these platelets differ from the other two cells actually these are cell fragments platelets are cell fragments so they do not because they are cell fragments there is no nucleus nothing in this platelets and platelets are produced as a result of fragmentation from a large cell which is called megakaryocyte now um, you can ask me where is this megakaryocyte this is present in the bone marrow so from the megakaryocytes of bone marrow by process called fragmentation platelets are formed what is the amount of these platelets platelets are nearly 150,000 to 350,000 cells are present per cubic millimeter of blood so the main function of these thrombocytes they produce some specialized or a sequence of different proteins which involved in clotting so they are responsible for 
blood clotting. So blood clotting is the main function of these thrombocytes. They initiate the process of clotting. Fine. So let us find out how the process of clotting is initiated by these platelets. Look at into this beautiful animation how these platelets are involved in sealing the proper sealing the wound or sealing the injured part of any tissue or any vessel or anything. Right. Guys, hope uh, you all understood this lecture. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. And uh, don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notifications whenever I post a new video. Good luck.